Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I am so excited to film today's video because I'm doing a Sephora haul. I picked up a bunch of products that I'm just excited to try. I feel like there are so many new releases, so when I find things that I'm genuinely excited about, like I could not wait to get my Sephora order, I think it's so much fun to like sit down and chat about them with you guys. So I did save money because the Sephora VIB sale is currently going on. I will put all of the dates and the codes in the description box below in case you guys are not familiar with the sale. I'll put some more info below low and then I actually got a hundred dollars of these products for free because I redeemed my points for a $100 Sephora gift card. I heard this rumor that they were going to be giving away $100 Sephora gift cards in exchange for points but every single time I went to redeem my points there wasn't one available or it was sold out and then I finally caught it one day and I think that is the best point perk ever. So today's video is sponsored by Ebates. I love partnering with Ebates because it's something that I've used for years. I want to say I've been a, been a member since like 2010, 2011, and I use it every single time I shop online. I used it for my Sephora order. I used it this morning when I booked a flight through Expedia. I'm telling you, I've saved so much money using Ebates. I know a lot of you guys are familiar with Ebates, but if you have never heard of it, it is the largest cashback site, and they partner with a bunch of retailers, like I said, like Sephora, Ulta. Expedia, Elf. All you have to do is start on the Ebates website and type in the store that you want to shop at. So for example, type in Sephora, click through to Sephora's website. All you do is shop like normal, check out like normal, and then every three months they'll pay you a percentage of that cash back through a check or through PayPal. If you're new to Ebates, you do get a $10 welcome bonus when you sign up and place your first order of $25 or more. So if you are planning on shopping the Sephora VIB sale, now is the perfect time to try it out because you get that welcome bonus and then on top of that, you also get your cash back, which is awesome. So I'm excited because we're also giving away a $100 gift card, which is awesome. I can't wait for one of you guys to get the chance to treat yourself to some new makeup or whatever you want. But all you have to do to enter is have an Ebates account. So again, the link will be in the description box below to sign up. And then after that, just click the link right below it to enter the giveaway. So again, thank you to Ebates for partnering with me and of course, sharing the love with my subscribers as well. So let's jump into it and I will chat about the products that I picked up. Okay, so I did pick up a few palettes. The first one is the Natasha Denona Mini Star Palette. I talked about this in a purchase or pass video, and I told you guys that I was planning on purchasing it. For some reason, the colors in this palette just really appealed to me. So I'm really excited to play around with it. Okay, the metallics in this palette already feel creamier than the metallics in the Mini Lila Palette. That is the only other Natasha Denona palette that I've tried, and they're already swatching so beautifully. I think the Mini Lila Palette had three mattes and two metallics, and these are just so gorgeous. I'm honestly so excited about this palette. I know that it might look more of like a basic palette to some people, but I don't know, I'm kind of like going back to the neutrals because I was really into color for a while and now I'm just feeling like super easy neutral looks. So I'm really looking forward to playing around with this. It just looks pretty and I don't know, Natasha Denona is just calling my name. So this is another palette that I knew that I wanted to grab. It just took me a little while to buy it. I wanted it as soon as I saw that it was going to be released and then I took a step back and I waited a little while until the hype died down to see if I still wanted it because sometimes Sometimes once the hype dies down, I'm not really interested in it anymore, but I'm still, like this one has still been on my list, so I decided to pick it up. It is the Too Faced Gingerbread Spice Eyeshadow Palette. So it does come in a tin case like their other palettes. Okay, so it is scented, but it's not overwhelmingly scented. Like as soon as you open up the tin, you're not met with like an intense gingerbread scent, but it is a little bit more on the subtle side. It kind of almost smells more like vanilla and cocoa rather than gingerbread. So I think they might have toned it down a little bit, but the colors in here are really beautiful. When I first saw it, these shades reminded me a lot of the Too Faced Chocolate Gold Palette, which is one of my favorites. That metallic formula is one of the best metallic formulas that I've ever tried. And then I thought like some of the shades were a little bit random, like the pinks and I don't know. They're random, but at the same time, I love this palette. I think I'm going to be able to get so many different looks just using this. And I know it's an unpopular opinion. I think I just... Yep, I just accidentally stuck my nail in one of them. Unpopular opinion, but Too Faced has been doing such a good job this year with their formulas. Oh, I just did it again. Anyways, this is a little bit of an unpopular opinion, but I really have been enjoying Too Faced this year. I said that in my 
one of my last videos and somebody commented and they were like, thumbs down because you said that about Too Faced. Not everybody has to enjoy the brand, but I think they've been doing a really good job this year. I just think the formulas are getting better and better and more high quality and more blendable and more pigmented. So I'm really looking forward to trying out this palette because the colors are beautiful, but because their formula has been improving so much, I really do have high hopes for it. So I'm looking forward to using it. And if you guys wanna see like a get ready with me, using it on my channel, just let me know. But let me know what kind of looks you love creating with this because there are so many colors that I don't know which ones to use first, but I am looking forward to trying it out. So I might as well share my last eyeshadow palette that I decided to grab. This is one that I was actually going to skip over, but honestly, I've really been into neutral eyeshadows lately. I went through like this super colorful phase and I still like color on my eyes, but lately the neutrals are just calling my name again. So I did grab the Anastasia Sultry Eyeshadow Palette. I've just been seeing a lot of good reviews on this palette and I've been hearing a lot of good things. And because I have been so into neutrals, I just wanted to add it to my collection. I've actually been reaching for my Anastasia palettes a lot lately. So this is what the palette looks like. It comes with 12 really beautiful eyeshadows. You do get a mix of mattes and metallics. The only shadow in here there's always like one or two shadows in the Anastasia palettes that throw me off and the one in here is this red one this like a mustard yellow is really beautiful and I can definitely see incorporating it into some looks maybe using like some of the gold tones but this red, it's just random. I know some people are going to enjoy it, but I wish they would have just left it out. So I'm looking forward to playing around with this, especially because I've been into such simple eyeshadow looks these days. I just like taking one shade, blending it into the crease, and then another shimmer or metallic shadow and placing it all over the lid. So I could definitely see myself getting use out of a lot of these shades and just creating some really easy, quick eyeshadow looks. And one of the reasons why I like Anastasia palettes so much is because their shadows are just easy to use and very quick. I'm looking forward to trying it out. I don't think I had to have this, like it wasn't a must have for me. It was just something that I decided to grab. When I got that gift card, I bought these two palettes because again, they weren't things that I had to have, but I did, I did want them. I did pick up the Ula Henriksen Banana Bright Eye Cream. I feel like I just bought this not that long ago, but I literally ran out of it last night and it's my go-to eye cream. I honestly haven't been able to find anything that I like as much and I really haven't been searching for anything else because this is my go-to. It just makes my entire eye area look so much better and brighter and awake and hydrated and it's just such a good formula. It's very, very hydrating. It's very thick and creamy. And at the same time, I can use it in the morning before I do my makeup and it's not like my makeup will crease or it's very heavy underneath my eyeshadow. I just really, really like this product. I raved about it so much on my channel, but it's just such a good eye cream. And I've searched for the longest time for the perfect eye cream and this is definitely it for me. So I got a couple of Fenty products. I did purchase the Fenty Beauty Pro Filter Soft Matte Longwear Foundation in the shade 150. I currently have 120, which is significantly too light for me. I don't even wear this on its own. I mainly mix it in with other foundations because I do like the formula but it's significantly too light and I never got around to exchanging it when I first purchased it. So I grabbed the shade 150. I'm hoping this works for me. A few of you guys who have very similar skin tones to me said this is your perfect shade. I'm making such a mess but this is 120 and this is 150. The undertones are very very different. I mean 120, I can't tell if it's because it's significantly lighter or it's just way more yellow toned. I think I'm going to have to try 150 on before I know for sure. It's hard to tell on my hand because my hands and like my arm my whole body is like a little bit darker than my face and my face is always so red and my neck is always so yellow. It's so hard to match yourself when it comes to foundation shades. I feel like my foundation is always too dark or too light or too yellow and I don't know why it's so difficult but it really really is. I also got the Fenty Beauty Gloss Balm Universal Lip Luminizer in the shade Diamond Milk. I hope that I love this. I really like the original gloss. I just have the mini version which has lasted forever but I usually throw it in my bag for like a good go-to gloss because it's very glossy, very beautiful, and the formula is not sticky. It's very smooth, and I just love the color. Diamond Milk is really different because it's actually like this clear gloss, but I think it's going to look so pretty on top of nude lipstick, and nude lipstick is pretty much the only color that I wear regularly. I think it could look really pretty over like a dark lipstick as well but it's very glossy, very glittery. I don't know if it's really going to show up well on my hand. I'm just looking forward to trying it out. Maybe I'll try it on now. I'm just wearing the Too Faced Natural Nudes lipstick in the shade Send Nudes. So let me put it on top and see how that looks. It smells really good. It sounds just like the original one. 
So that's what it looks like over a nude lipstick. What do you guys think? I think it looks pretty, but it almost looks like a clear gloss on my nude lipstick rather than like a glittery gloss. I don't think it did anything super crazy. I do think it's pretty. I do think it looks really pretty and I like this lipstick with the gloss on top of it better than on its own. So I feel like that's a good sign. I'll have to keep playing around with it and seeing how I like to use it best, whether it's on its own, on top of a dark lipstick or a nude, but that is what it looks like on top of a nude. I also decided to pick up the Fenty Diamond Bomb All Over Diamond Veil. I went back and forth on this one a little bit because I'm not usually the fan or the biggest fan of super, super glittery highlighters, but Nicole Cutler is one of my favorites here on YouTube. She like I watch all of her videos. I'll link her channel in the description box below She's been saying that it's not super glittery on the face Okay, the texture is very very soft like it almost feels like a cream to powder highlighter and it doesn't feel chunky or glittery at all. It's hard to explain. Like it almost looks glittery, but at the same time, it doesn't look glittery. I have to apply this to the face. I'm going to try it on on camera as well. So I'm just taking my Wet n Wild highlight brush, which is what I normally use, and I'm just going to apply it on top of, I'm wearing the Becca highlighter in Vanilla Quartz. This is really pretty. It's definitely an intense highlighter. I don't have a lot of like super intense highlighters in my collection. It almost has like a wet look to it. It's very, very beautiful. I definitely see what Nicole was saying because it looks more glittery like when you swatch it on your hand than it does when you apply it to your cheek. So I'm excited to add this one to my collection. I'm going to do a follow-up haul and review all of these products for you guys in a few weeks, so I'll let you guys know what I think of this long-term. But first impressions, like, I'm a fan. It's really, really beautiful, and the packaging is gorgeous as well. I also picked up the Anastasia Brow Wiz in the shade Dark Brown, which is a good thing because I just ran out of mine again yesterday. I hate that about brow pencils because unless you're constantly checking, one day you're just completely out of it and you have to have it. Like, a brow pencil is not something that's super interchangeable for me at this point. This is my absolute favorite. I did order a few affordable alternatives like the LA Girl Pencil and maybe another one from Ulta's website, so I'll do an Ulta haul very soon. But in the meantime, this is my go-to. And the last thing that I picked up is a little bit of a splurge. I always say that I'm going to grab one of these and I never do because they are expensive, but I just decided to just go for it, get the 20% off and buy it because I know that I'll use it. It is the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Edit Volume 4. I decided to go for it this year though because Hourglass blushes are my favorite. They are pretty much the only blushes that I wear. I could really declutter my entire blush collection and just be happy with like my four or five Hourglass blushes. And instead of just spending the money on like one blush that almost cost $40, I figured this palette would be a great way to expand my collection and have a lot of different options. The nice thing about this palette too is that it comes with a variety of products. So it comes with two finishing powders, one strobe powder, one bronzer, one blush, and one strobe blush. I think the majority of these products, if not all, are permanent products in their collection. So if I do fall in love with one, I can always go and purchase the full size. But honestly, the mini versions of these products last forever. So I'll definitely update you guys in a few weeks and let you know if I regret this purchase or if I'm happy with it in my haul update. Okay guys, that is all that I have for you today. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you let me know in the comments below if you guys already shopped the sale or if you plan on shopping the sale and picking anything up. If you guys do grab anything, I would love to hear what you think of the products and don't forget to use Ebates to get that cash back on top of the sale because every little bit does count. And again, don't forget to enter my giveaway with Ebates for a chance to win a $100 gift card. So I'll put a link in the description box below, but I hope you guys have a great day and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.